Well, hello, neighbor. I got that kind of an introduction from a fellow that I used to love and got to hear preach numbers of times, and that's Dr. Bill Rice from years ago. And he'd always start out, when he entered the pulpit, he would always say, hello, neighbor, or good evening, neighbor. And so I want to say that to you as well. And I appreciate the fact that you've tuned in. And let me just uh, kind of talk to you for a little bit about what's going to be going on here that I think would possibly be a real blessing uh, to those of you who are tuning in and listening. And that is, I'm beginning right now, and it'll be a number of series, but you won't want to miss one of the messages on prophecy that I'm going to be speaking. I'm going to be speaking on prophecy. And I'm telling you now, this is the day of biblical fulfillment of biblical prophecy honestly and so i'm going to be spending some time with you and you know as well as i know that we're living in some serious times just as the lord had told us would come about but it goes even deeper than that he has told us some things in the new testament as well as the old testament in reference to not only the rapture not only the tribulation and not only the thousand-year millennium that Christ will reign, but he's given to us some indications that we can know when we are entering into that particular season of these prophetic things happening. Now, I have taken time to go through a lot of historical things, <clears throat> looked up a number of different occasions that have taken uh, place <clears throat> and may I say just in the recent past in the 80s and the 90s and now the 2000s <clears throat> and I want you to know that I've done a thorough study in fact if you'll notice I'll hold it up here and let you see it all of my notes are handwritten which means that I have pinned down all of these different things. So if I refer to my notes a little bit, it's because I don't want to leave anything out. What I have studied, I want to bring to you and let you see it for yourself. So we're going to talk about prophetic things. So the first place I'm going to start, I'll be looking in 2 Thessalonians and chapter number 2 in just a moment. And I've got my Bible open here and I'm going to read a passage to you. So if you want to prepare yourself by going and getting your Bible <clears throat> and turn, excuse me, <clears throat> and turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm going to read this portion of scripture and then I'm going to preach to you today and teach you on what the subject that the Lord has given to us here is. And it's the subject of the one world order and the coming of of the Antichrist, the dictator. The one world order and the Antichrist, the dictator. And like I said, I've studied, <clears throat> I've prepared, I have a whole host of notes here. So if you see me looking down at them, it's because I've written them down and I don't want to miss some of the things that I have studied and placed on paper that I think is very, very important for us to know and understand as to where we are. Now let me go to the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and I'm going to read it, and I'm going to begin reading <coughs> up there in verse number 3. And here's what it says. <coughs> and listen carefully, if you don't have your Bible, just listen, because I want you to get it. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who is it that the Lord called in the Gospels the son of perdition? The one who betrayed him, Judas. Where's Judas? When the Bible gives an explanation of his killing himself, it said that he went into the pit. He went to his own place. 
So the devil has imitated and counterfeited everything Christ has ever done. So there's actually going to be, I believe, a resurrection, not necessarily bodily, but the soul of Judas Iscariot, the son of perdition, who will enter in the person who be the Antichrist. I've got a lot of scripture. I believe that if you were to follow me through on that, you would come to the same conclusion that I did. So it says the son of perdition, the, the man of sin, is going to be revealed. Now let me go on. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. <clears throat> now, folks, let me just tell you something. The Bible tells us in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, that he's going to make himself like unto God, and that he's going to reign as God. It was predicted in the Old Testament, and now we're seeing it going to be fulfilled and we see uh, the Apostle Paul telling the Thessalonica church that this, this is a, uh, a repeat of what we learned in the Old Testament. Now let me go on. The Apostle Paul says to the church at Thessalonica, Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. And I'm going to say it's working right now. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. That's the Holy Spirit who's restraining the hope of the uh, Antichrist to be brought on the scene just now. But at the rapture, it'll be taken away. He'll be taken away. We'll be taken away. <clears throat> and when shall and then shall that wicked <clears throat> be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, Revelation chapter 19, and shall destroy with the brightness the glory of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness, in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them, as it is today, strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure, pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, folks, let me just tell you this, and I think it's very important that you understand. In these series of studies that I'm going to be doing with you, we want to use the scripture and we want to rightly divide the word of truth. So, as to identify this one we just read about, the man of sin. We want to identify him. The son of perdition. We want to know who he is. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 13, which we'll look at through the course of the study, that we can count the number of the beast and we can become aware of who this man is. And then it says, the... Man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, is to be studied and rightly divide the word of truth as to who he is. Now we're going to need to observe first how the condition of the world will be at that time that they would accept him, the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. They have, the world will accept him as their Messiah. They're going to accept him as their leader. It's coming. And I'll show you that rich men, wealthy men, have been behind the promotion to get the world into the condition that it is right now. And it's in a bad condition. 
but it's been brought that way because of the de delusion and the deception and the spirit of the Antichrist. So in order to prepare for the dictatorship of this one man, the Antichrist, we got to remember that one of the things that the Lord said in, to Timothy, there in 1 Timothy chapter 6, that the love of money is the root of all evil. What's the big emphasis even on the election? The economy. Money. Materialism. Getting the whole world to think on monetary things instead of spiritual things. So, they gave you clues on your own money when they designed and printed it. And I hope that I can get into it a little bit later and have you take out a dollar bill. And I'll show you something that probably you had not seen before in reference to our money and to who it is ascribed to. And even though it says in God we trust, and I would hope, of course, it was in reference to the God of heaven, but there's the God of this world, as you know. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to study this prophecy and I'm going to bring to you the challenge for you to think about this one world order and the coming of the Antichrist, the dictator. Now one of the greatest signs, and I'm not necessarily convinced that I ought to use the word signs because we have all the signs given to us in the scripture. But one of the greatest signs that I'm convinced of the soon return of Christ to be able to produce this one Antichrist is going to be that hardly anyone, even Christians, will be looking for his return. We may talk about it. We may have knowledge of it. But we're not daily expecting it. We're not looking for his coming. That's why the Bible says to wake out of sleep, watch, pray, in reference to these last days. Now the beginning of the end time of prophecies began with, I believe, the fulfillment of Ezekiel 36, 24, which says, For I will take you from among the heathen, speaking to Israel, and gather you out of all countries, and will bring you into your own land. It also says the same in Amos chapter 9 verses 14 and 15. Now ladies and gentlemen, let me give you a list of prophecies. And I'll even give you the scriptures that goes with them. So if you would like to write them down, you can look them up yourself. But here are the prophecies. Here they are. Prophecy number one is Israel in her homeland. That's actually have already taken place in 1948. Israel in her homeland. Prophecy number two, Jerusalem regained. And of course, that's given to us in Luke 21, 24. And it happened on July 7th. 1967. Prophecy. Fulfilled. Done. Then the third prophecy is a mark of the beast technology. Oh my soul. Is the Antichrist going to be able to use the technological world that we're living in? But Revelation 13, verses 16 through 17, tells us that there's going to be a cashless society. And I know you're wise enough to already see it happening. Where we use credit cards, <laughs> we can get online, we can buy anything, even groceries or whatever, through technology. And that was prophesied for us in Revelation 13, verses 16 to 17. Now, hear me out. There shall be wars. That's a prophecy. 
Matthew 24. We're in the fulfillment of it right now. And then there should be men's hearts failing themselves for fear. Luke 21, 25 through 26. Have you ever heard of so many suicides? Men's hearts failing them for fear. And the suicidal rate is far beyond imagination. It's going on because of the times in which we live. Men's hearts are fearful and they can't stand to try to live in that fear. So they commit suicide. Now, wait a minute. I also found out that there's a cry for, for a world leader. And it's right now a cry for a world leader. And you'll find that actually in Revelation 13, verses 3 through 4. Then there's what the Bible calls famines. And there's not only just food famines, but there are many. There's a famine for the word of God, by the way. And that's also in the Old Testament. But if you look at Matthew chapter 24, verse number 7, it talks about the famines. Mark 13, verse 8. Luke 20, verse 11. Amos 8, 11 and 12. And then, of course, uh, malnutrition, nutrition, malnutrition, and we're living in that particular type of, of a lifestyle now, and processed artificial foods and all the rest of that. We have a famine of health because we have a famine of nourishing foods, and that's what the Lord is trying to tell us here, that this will be taking place just before he comes and takes us out of here so the Antichrist can come to a wicked, vile, unnourished, spiritual unnourished, and even physically unnourished world. Now listen to me. The Bible says there's going to be earthquakes and pestilences in the last days. That's in Matthew chapter 24. Then he mentions all these natural disasters of earthquakes and cyclones and tornadoes and and all of these different things that are happening right now. But let me just remind you of pestilences. What's COVID-19 got to do with a pestilence? Big time pestilence. Shutting down the very society. And having to wear masks everywhere we go. And stopping assemblies, even church. Pestilences. And don't, don't forget, there was the Ebola pestilence. There was, There is the cancer pestilence. There is the AIDS pestilence. And we can go on and on of different things. But there's the pestilence. We're, we're here. We'd have to be absolutely, totally blinded not to see that God told us what to look for. And these are the things that we look for. Now hold it. Christians and Jews, the Bible says, would be hated. Matthew 24, Luke 21, verse number 17. And I'm telling you, we're in, a, we're in a place of hatred now, both Christians and Jews in this world today. And I know you know, unless, of course, you're totally out of sync, but I know you know that this is true. And then the forming of a one world government is in play right now, just like the Bible says and would be ruled by the Antichrist. And we're living in that prophetical time right now. And you can find it in Revelation chapter 13, verse number 7. And then there's the one world economy. Boy, are we near that. That also, like it says, Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 through 17. And then there's going to be and is the redistribution of the world's wealth which is nothing more than socialism. And Daniel chapter number 11, verse number 24, tells us that that very thing would take place. And here we are living nearly in a socialistic controlled world to produce the Antichrist. Then there's the coming of a one world religion. Revelation chapter 13, verse number 8. Because we're going to have those that will literally worship that's the religion the antichrist okay now watch in prophecy number 15 there's going to be the rise to power of russia 
You hear much about Russia today, don't you? Well, it's no wonder. Ezekiel 38 and 39 tells us all about Russia and China and the Eastern country. It's all there. And that was a prophetic thing for us to have note of that we'll know when we're coming to the time of the uh, rule of the Antichrist, the one world order. Russia is one day going to invade Israel. That's in Ezekiel 38 verses 3 and 4. Verses 7 through 9. In verses 14 through 16, Russia will invade Israel. And then the prophecy is that most of the population of the world is going to be deceived. Matthew 24, verse 11. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 13. And then the Bible says this, get this. The, the Catholic Church and Pope will emerge to a one world church. Revelation 13, verses 1, 4, 5. And Pope Francis, and I'm gonna, I, I just discovered this, so I'm going to write it down. Pope Francis said, and I quote, Pope Francis said, I urge all religions to work together against political, ideological, and economic, economic tensions that threaten the survival of mankind. It is God's will that we work together to bring this about. I speak to the Hindus, the Muslims, the Protestants, and the Catholics. Now, what's the Pope trying to say? Let's let the world all get together under one banner. That's exactly what he said. Under every area. So there can only be one that will control it. And I'll show you who that one is. Probably in the next few days. The prophecy 19 is there be many who depart from the faith. Well, have we seen that happen? First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 tells us that many will depart from the faith. Here we are. We're living in it. We're seeing it. And it's a prophetic thing to tell us this is, a, this is an indication of the soon coming of the Lord and the rule of the Antichrist. After the Lord takes us out, he'll come on the scene. And prophecy number 20 is the world will focus on only prosperity, as I said earlier. And if you read James chapter 5, how it deals with the coming of the Lord, and James chapter 5, how it deals with the economy, you'll be amazed. Read James 5. Read it and see. And then, of all things, it says there will be scoffers. Oh, really? scoffers in America, in the White House, in the political world, scoffers in the religious world, making fun of a message like this that I'm preaching? Oh yes, you better believe it. Most, in fact, there are Christians who cannot handle this kind of truth. And they'll scoff it and say it's all made up or it's all a, a deception or or, or some other excuse as to not believe what I'm telling you right now. But I'm telling you, there will be scoffers. Matthew 24, 44, the Lord was very plain to reveal that to us. And not only that, at other portions of Scripture, but there's going to be a rejection, as there is right now, of true, genuine Bible doctrine. Even the Bible doctrine of the Word of God itself. And the Bible is very clear in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 3, that tells us there's going to be a rejection of Bible doctrine. And of all things, one of the prophetic passages of Scripture, and I don't want to use the word sign, but if it's a sign, let it be. But one of the signs is, the Bible says, iniquity shall abound. Abound? In other words, <laughs> really go forward? Yeah, iniquity shall abound. Matthew 24, verse number 12, tells us plainly, iniquity shall abound. What kind of iniquity? Well, homosexuality, lawlessness, <laughs> defund the cops, lawlessness, riots and nobody controlling them. The Bible's very plain in telling us 
that that kind of iniquity would be abounding. Here we are. And in the courts, lawlessness in our courts, setting the criminals that have been sentenced, setting them free out into society to continue on with their criminal, criminal, criminal actions. Think about it. Folks, just give us a thought about it. And who would ever dreamed? I would not have, especially as a kid, that drugs today would be legalized. Where you can just go in and buy a pack of, of marijuana, for example. But drugs are legalized. They're bringing them into our country like crazy. And nobody's stopping them. And people are addicted to them. And they can get them anywhere they want them. And our laws of the land are doing very little to prevent it. Here we are. We're living in that day. And then, don't forget, Jesus himself says, as it was in the days of Noah. What were the days of Noah? If you'd, if you'd go to back to Genesis, chapter number 6, and then look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, you're going to see that the lawlessness actually deals with this matter of of not having any anybody to be able to stop the violence that's occurring. Violence. It's everywhere. And the Bible is very plain to tell us that that would be one of the one of the causes. Now let me just whet your appetite a little bit of some of the information here that I have come up with that I believe with all my heart is the forming of the one world order and the coming world dictator, the Antichrist. I've done my study. I hope it'll pay off by convincing you of the need that we have to open our spiritual eyes and see exactly where we are right now. Here it is. Listen to this. The phrase, New World Order, that phrase has been used by the media it has been used by the New Age groups. It has been used by talk show hosts. It has been used by the religions. It has been used by government agencies. And politicians and the presidents of the United States of America have used that phrase repeatedly. The New World Order. Now hear me out. It was on September 11th. I've studied it, found it, wrote it down so I could tell you. On September 11th, 1990, President Bush, that's Bush Sr., made a speech to the Congress and he entitled his speech to the Congress on September 11, 1990, and he titled his speech, Toward a New World Order. Oh, yes, he did. Yeah. Even though that term is being used in everyday communication now, most Americans know very little as to what it really means. It's said repeatedly, and it just becomes happenstance and something that's said, but no depth to search out what is being said and what is being meant by it. Even though that term is being used in everyday communications, we really have people that don't know what it means. I believe the New World Order simply means this. Are you ready? A single world community. Watch this. A single world community with a single world world government with a single world ruler a dictator the antichrist oh yes 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 as you know world organizations are common for example there are world organizations there's the world council of churches of all things God help us to ever be part of that. Then there's the 
World Trade Organization that President Trump has himself tried to fight against some of the areas of that particular organization. And then there's, the, just recently we've heard about this, the World Health Organization. Oh yeah, yeah. The one that the United States of America, thank God, pulled out of. But what I'm saying is, there's many world organizations. And the government and the media especially are being very deceitful in making it appear that the new world community is evolving naturally by a chain of different events. Nothing has ever evolved by itself. Are you listening to me? Nothing has ever evolved by itself. The real truth is, everything that is in the world has been created by God or by the creatures that God has created. So, the world community is being created and is the creation of man. And it's happening right now. It's not of God, but man who is sinful is creating what we call the world community. Oh, yes, it is. Facts and history prove that for hundreds of years, there has been an elite group of world bankers secretly using their wealth to influence governments of the world. Using their wealth to influence the governments of the world. Then they manipulate these governments for their own benefit. Now hear me, I'm going to the direction we need to listen to. This has been happening for so long. These elite world bankers have gained full control of all finances, peoples, society, and have produced a socialist government. And we in America are nearly there to even have one of them as an, uh, a candidate for the presidency. A socialist government and our politicians are filled with socialism. And it's all come as a result of the forming of the organization of a world community. So in a nutshell, these high powers and these powered socialists that we have with the help of the media. Did you hear what I just said there? The help of the media have set in motion slowly and secretly the world government. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it. The conspirators now have enough power and control to complete their plans for the new world order. They do. That is all that's needed to have done is a single man with the power and the acceptance to dictate it. And that man is the Antichrist and he's waiting to come on the scene after the rapture. And that means we're that much closer to the rapture because we're that much closer to the world government. Oh, I hope you're listening. Get this, and I'll have to close. But a major crisis had to come to the United States of America. Don't, don't miss what I'm going to say here. A major crisis had to come to the United States of America to usher in the new global system. What was that major crisis? 9-11. And that was put together by some governmental officials that when we know the truth, it's going to make our stomachs turn as to who is behind 9-11. When this crisis came to the people of the United States of America, the people of the U.S. were being and are being disarmed and placed under the authority of the world government. 
why do you think now just think with me why do you think obama and biden nearly destroyed our military that trump had to rebuild why were they allowing our military to be destroyed <laughs> so that they would disarm the only uh, nation that has not sold out in socialism as of yet. So if they disarm the military, they can have this take place. Think of the changes of our freedoms that took place after 9-11. Think of it. When that happened, the Constitution is not being used to protect the rights and the freedoms of all the Americans? You may not believe this is happening, but the truth of the Bible and the evidence at hand proves the new world order lieth at our door. Conspiracies are happening like you would not believe. Now let me reveal to you the conspiracy that is now in effect, and then I'm going to continue this on for tomorrow. But listen to this. The media, and I say the media, the liberal socialist media, plays the largest role in the conspiracy that's going on right now, which is to deny the United States citizens the facts about the new world order. Now, folks, I love America. I love my Lord. I love my Bible. I love my family. My heart is overwhelmed with love for you and all the burdens that you may be carrying. But may I just somehow get you to sense that the Lord has given us prophetic things to awaken us so that we'll live spiritually for him in these days before the one world order is brought by having the antichrist come into existence and it will not he will not come into existence until we're raptured out of here so that means the rapture is very close please listen to me pray for america pray for your pastor pray for your church Pray for your family. Pray for your friends. Pray that we'll be able to have the deception that brought delusion to be removed from us so that we can live a life of spirituality until this all comes. Now next service, I'm going to bring you the truth and I'm going to show you in quotes as to what the media has said and what they are doing to blindfold Americans. Tune in. I hope you will. Father, I want to thank you for the listening audience. Dear God in heaven, work on our hearts. Make us aware of what's going on so that we can do what you bid us to do in fulfilling your will and preparing for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless now each one who hears me, and I pray, dear Lord, that each one will search their own hearts, for I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, folks.